the whole mixture of emotions of in that moment thinking, I so want this to end, but I so don't want it to end. Can't believe this, this is it. Martin, it's great to be here, to spend this time chatting with you. Um, I remember a friend of mine for a birthday present once got me a poster of you guys, wow. which you'd signed. You I had still it on, got that poster. I do, well, it's yeah. not on my bedroom wall <laughs> now, but it was for many years. It said, Dear Tim, keep up the good work. Oh, Love, Martin. I, I remember seeing you many times in, in concert and leading worship. And for so many people, uh, you provided a, a soundtrack for a generation, and your music inspired so many. How does that feel? Well, it's, it's quite emotional, really. I mean, even you, even you saying that, I and mean, we've known each other how many years and you've never told me about the picture that I saw. <laughs> for good reason. <laughs> <laughs> to be in something for so many years with, you know, with great team around me, great guys, to look back very fondly and think, actually, yeah, you know, we, God really used us. And, and, you know, we didn't know everything that we were doing. We just went for it. We weren't making music for, you know, records to be released or a record label asking us to come on, we've got to pump some music out. It really was very organic. And what do you think it was about those songs that sort of captured so many people's imagination and hearts? Wow, I think um, a lot of joy. Mm. I think we were young kids growing up, you know, discovering all that was great about God. We wanted to write about it. We wanted other people to share in that. So I think you can hear a lot of um, sort of energy and right, we're going to change the world here mm. in, these, in these songs. And uh, I think we believed it, mm. you know, ev every word. I think one of the key songs of that time would have been Did You Feel the Mountains Tremble? Yeah. And just this whole chorus of open up the doors and let the music play was us saying, we can't just keep doing church within the four walls of what we know. We've got to bust it down, you know, we've mm. got to break it down. Let the music go outside you know, into the streets and let it touch people. And uh, so that was really, I think that was one of the themes we carried, was, mm. you know, this thing should have no walls, no boundaries. Let's get out there. Let's release some songs into the mainstream. Let's, yeah, you know, could we do it? Could we put a song, song in the charts? These songs getting into the charts, being heard by people who don't go to church, what do you think could happen? What, how could that impact someone's life? Well, I think music is really powerful and I've always believed that it's sort of God's secret weapon, really. Mm. You know, it, it, it's able to get into places in someone's heart that, you know, a kind of a normal conversation or a preach or a, mm. can, can do. And so I've always believed that. And so we're always mad enough to believe that, you know, we get these songs on the radio, people would be driving their car around and get touched by the music. and set them on a whole different course of their life. Mm. And so that was, always the, that was always the dream. And it was your song Deeper, I think, that was your first song that was released yeah. into the charts and it reached number 13? Uh, 20, I think that 20. was. Yeah, I, won't, I remember it was 20 because I heard it on the radio the first time and number 19 was the Spice Girls. <laughs> and, uh, well, if you're going to be beaten by anyone. I was jumping around like... Let it be the Spice Girls. Yeah, number tw <laughs> yeah and then I heard the Spice Girls track come and I was like, oh wow. Sounds really good, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> what did that feel like? You know, you're there listening to Radio 1, they're playing your song, you're in the top 40. Yeah, it was amazing. Uh, amazing feeling. And also, you're very proud of the sort of community that we were a part of, you know. It wasn't, didn't feel really like it was just us in the charts. It felt like a whole generation of young people growing up in the UK. So with the um, releasing song to the charts, you know, selling singles, was that something you felt God saying? What, why did you go down that line? Oh, that's a really interesting one. Um, I th no, I think there was probably a bit of ego involved. I think, I think we wanted it. I think, you know, at that age, you're sort of early 20s, you're thinking, you know, I kind of, you know, I love doing this for mm. God, but also I'd really like to be famous, really. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the, you know, nothing we do is pure, is it, in mm. our motive. I think there's always a little bit of both going on. Uh, and over the course of your life, hopefully it gets worked out a little bit. Yeah. 
but definitely no. I mean, we loved it. Um, you know, we wanted to, wanted to be the next U2, hmm. and uh, you know, we were a great team, and we just poured everything we were into making that dream happen. Looking back, then, what was the thing you really wanted? What were you hope? Where were you hoping it would end up? I think at certain times, I look back, and you know, speaking personally, I can probably say I lost my focus a little bit. You know, you, you can't get everything right the whole time. Yeah. Uh, otherwise we'd be perfect. But I think, honestly, deep down, the vision was we wanted God to meet people, yeah. uh, for people to meet God. And I think that was really burning in us, you know, and that covered everything. That covered all the little mistakes we made along the way was mm. actually we really wanted this to be a big God thing. I mean, Anna's amazing, so, you know, she's held everything together really. But has there been a cost for them, do you think, and for Anna? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think with, with anything that, that happens that's out of the ordinary, mm. you know, there's always a cost for it. You know, but I think that when you feel like you're doing the right thing, mm. um, you have to trust that it's all going to work out. You know, there's a lot of grace involved. Mm. And I think God gave us a lot of grace for it. And so we're all still in one piece yeah, yeah. here today. And, uh, you know, we look back, I mean, even like we've been f f digging out photos of yeah. this and the kids are like, I can't believe we did all that. You know? Yeah, amazing. amazing. In 97, you end up leading worship at Wembley and uh, you come out with your England tops. <laughs> well, you were wearing the England tops, Smith, it's not wrong. Um, yeah, that was yours. Um, <laughs> And suddenly playing in front of 50,000 people. Yeah. I mean, how did that feel? You're used to playing church halls and then Wembley Stadium. I remember, you know, the moment Sanctify came on and, you know, 50,000 people waving their hands and sort of pinching myself going, mm. I can't, you know, three years ago, four years ago, we were just running this little youth event mm. in Littlehampton and now we're, we're in Wembley Stadium and this is bonkers. So what are you thinking here, running up? thinking, I've got to kick this football in the crowd <laughs> and hope that goes well. There we go. And I'm almost, look, I'm almost fall off the side. Bit of a slice as well, isn't it? Yeah. Wow, look at that. Good left foot, though. <laughs> <laughs> You're obviously trying to lead worship, but then there's all these people looking at you. You must feel a bit like a rock star. <laughs> well, I think, I think the thing with Delirious was no one could really work out what it was and yeah. I don't think we could ever work out what it was but we were being ourselves though. Yeah. Um, I think what you're seeing is a bunch of guys being themselves, this is what we love. We, we want to lead people into the presence of God but we're going to do it by turning everything out really loud. Um, play in front of tens of thousands of people, you know, they're all there waiting for living on a prayer yeah, and yeah. you're there singing, you know, your songs of worship. How was that? How do you try and lead worship to a bunch of people who are waiting to hear yeah. Bon Jovi? It's really exciting. Hmm. In fact, actually, I felt, looking back, I felt most alive in those moments. Wow. Um, and what was it that made you feel alive? Um, I think that um, because it's, you know, they're not to, there to see you. They weren't there to see us. They were there to see, you know, Bon Jovi or Brian Adams. I remember Brian Adams in... Um, Hyde Park yeah and like you say there's just loads of people off their heads and they're waiting for Brian Annas to come on and there we are doing investigate hmm. and I remember at the end of that song getting the whole crowd to put their hands in the air and, and I just shouted out right do you want to you know do you want heaven to come down yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. but you know in those moments you you know that God can break in yeah so we're going to watch a clip from uh, the last time you've ever played. Oh, wow. The Apollo London. You've just sung the last song as uh, the lead singer of Delirious. How are you feeling? Pretty well, emotional by it. Uh, yeah. You know, I've not watched this, you know, since we made it three years ago. So yeah, There's all the families, the kids, crazy. the band's kids. Yeah, I remember in, in that moment thinking, I so want this to end, Yeah. but I so don't want it to end. Mm. You know, just the whole mixture of emotions of can't believe this this is it. Yeah. You can see um, 
is a bittersweet moment, but also you can see the emotions for the family as well. I think we should turn it off. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's, it was incredible. I mean, you know, what a team. I think that's yeah. the thing, you know, just uh, amazing to say that you've uh, done something incredible, but with incredible people, yeah. you know, and, and so... Do you miss them? Do you miss yeah, playing I do, with them? Yeah, I do, yeah, I do. But um, but also there's a rightness about now. Yeah. That there's a real confidence in that we're in the right place. Did the other guys share that same feeling about bringing the band to a close? No, it was a difficult decision. Um, and very sudden for me, hmm. um, I, I had felt for a couple of years like I can't see this, you know, I can't see myself growing much older into this. But uh, one morning I woke up and I just thought, I, I really feel I'm done. Hmm. And so I went to the guys and explained. It's a difficult, yeah. it's a difficult moment. You know, we were all gearing up to keep going. And then suddenly, you know, the singer's saying he doesn't want to carry on. Hmm. So, you know, five families, we were all, we're all very close, yeah. family as you know. And so it had, had a big impact. Um, but, um, you know, for us it was the right decision mm. and I don't, I don't regret it. Yeah, I remember waking up that following morning and um, kind of a real mixture of elation yeah. that we'd done it, we'd done it well. And also sort of feeling really grumpy and <laughs> a bit depressed, you know, thinking, what am I going to do? Um, is this it then? You know, am I ever going to sing again? Or hmm. which sounds crazy, but I, did you I, did, did you generally think yeah that could be it? I just thought, well, maybe I'm never going to do it again. Wow. Um, was that scary? Yeah, it was. It was. I thought, wow, what on earth have I thrown away? Hmm. You know, this is too big to throw away. 